So hello everybody and uh, welcome to uh, the uh, ESDR kitchen. For those of you who are not uh, too familiar with uh, our kitchen, so this is uh, actually a series of live events that the ESDR has been organizing for uh, the past uh, year uh, to try to promote scientific communication uh, during uh, those challenging times. So we have the within the kitchen uh, four uh, different tracks. Uh, we have the molecular cuisine where leaders in their field share their personal journey through scientific discovery, the freshly baked series where recent and uh, groundbreaking discoveries are being discussed. We have then the sweet and sour series where uh, two protagonists are discussing, uh, usually a controversial uh, topic. And finally, the recipe book where new techniques are uh, being presented. And this is, uh, of course, what uh, today's episode is uh, about. And uh, I'll pass now on to uh, uh, the two uh, co-chairs of uh, this uh, session, Julien Seneschal and uh, Enrico Santoli, uh, who will introduce our speaker of today. Please. Thank you very much, uh, Eli. Um, Hi everyone, so I'm Julien Seneschal from Bordeaux and I'm sharing this session with uh, Enico Sancoli. And um, this is our great pleasure to welcome during this ESDR webinar uh, kitchen, uh, Dr. Seiko Nakajima. Uh, she obtained her PhD uh, MD in 2003 from Osaka uh, Medical College in Japan. And then she obtained her PhD in 2012 from Kyoto University. Following a postdoctoral uh, fellowship at Kyoto University, uh, she worked uh, on immune response in atopic uh, dermatitis using mouse uh, models. And then uh, she did the second uh, postdoctoral fellowship in the uh, Dr. Velkaid's group uh, in the United States. And uh, she did this uh, postdoctoral fellowship from 2015 and 2017. And then she went back to the Department of Dermatology at Kyoto University as assistant professor. And now uh, she is as associate professor at the Department of Drug Discovery for, for Inflammatory Skin Disease at Kyoto University. And so it's a great pleasure. She will talk about mouse model uh, in atopic dermatitis. And um, uh, so you can ask uh, your questions through the chat using the Q&A uh, box. So please say cool. Yes. Okay. So uh, good afternoon, everybody. Thank you so much uh, for your kind introduction, Julian. And I'm Saiko Nakajima from Kyoto University. And uh, so today I'm gonna talk about mouse model of atopic dermatitis. So it is very difficult to explain all the mouse models in detail. So I will explain, pick up some uh, established or very famous atopic dermatitis model and showing some of uh, our studies related to that model. So this is today's agenda. And I will start from the pathogenesis of atopic dermatitis and then go for mouse models of atopic dermatitis. So let's start from the pathogenesis of atopic dermatitis. Atopic dermatitis is a polytic chronic inflammatory skin disease and must have three or more uh, basic features that is politis, typical uh, morphology and distribution, and chronic or chronically relapsing dermatitis like this, and personal or family history of atopic uh, diseases such as asthma, allergic rhinitis, and atopic dermatitis. There are so many factors and molecules playing roles in the pathogenesis of atopic dermatitis. So the factors and molecules interact each other. As you can see, it is really complicated. So to understand complicated pathogenesis of atopic dermatitis uh, much clearer, so I'm, I'm introducing this uh, simple schema. Barrier disruption and uh, type two immune responses and pruritus are three major factors of the pathogenesis of atopic dermatitis. So they interact, interact each other and drive uh, the disease. Through a disrupted barrier, allergen exposure induced TAC, TSLP, or IL-33 production from keratinocyte and promote TH, uh, type 2 immune responses. 
On the other hand, type 2 immune responses uh, produce TH2 uh, related cytokines, such as IL-4 and IL-13. Uh, this is in turn decreased filaggrin expression of keratinocytes. Uh, type 2 immune responses also uh, produce uh, induce itch mediators, such as IL-4, 13, and histamine, and which uh, induce colitis in the patient. And colitis itself uh, let patients scratch their skin, and uh, scratch uh, behavior induce keratinocyte to make uh, produce TAC or TSOP. And this also uh, promote T type 2 immune responses. And the scratch behavior itself cause barrier disruption. And the uh, uh, disrupt disruptive barrier uh, promote uh, neuropeptide such as TSLP, altimine, MGF, and semaphorin 3A, and that induce colitis. And other factors such as environmental factors, uh, microbiome and sweat, or uh, genetic factors such as fairway mutations also are uh, involved in the pathogenesis of atopic dermatitis. So uh, let's move on to the main topic of today's talk. So before moving into a mouse model, I would like to draw your attention to the difference between mouse and human skin. So human skin, uh, as you know, is much thicker than that of mice. So like uh, my skin has uh, two or three layers of keratinocyte. On the other hand, human skin has five to 10 layers of keratinocytes. And as you, uh, if you look at uh, immune cells in the skin, so there are a big difference between these uh, human and uh, mice uh, skin and mice. Uh, skin has uh, dendrit uh, uh, my skin has uh, gamma delta T cells in the epidermis, but human skin uh, doesn't have uh, gamma delta T cells in the epidermis. Also, uh, the uh, density of the hair follicle or sebaceous gland are much uh, very big difference in this uh, to uh, human and my skin. So uh, mouse models of atopic dermatitis are roughly uh, categorized into two models. One is genetically engineered mouse models and epicutaneous sensitization models. Let's take a look at uh, genetically engineered mouse models targeting epidermal barrier. So before explaining mass models, I would like to share uh, basic knowledge related to epidermal skin barrier as one of our main pathogenesis of atopic dermatitis. Uh, during the terminal differentiation of keratinocytes, profilaglin at granular layer is disphosphorylated and proteolized into free filaglin monomers. And filaglin and its metabolites uh, plays an uh, important role and keep components of uh, the epidermal skin barrier. And uh, so they also are uh, being the source of natural moisturi moisturizing factors. And loss of function mutations in the filaggrin gene are the strongest genetic risk factor for atopic dermatitis, as you know. And down regression of filaggrin gene expression is moderated by Th2 cytokines, such as IL-4 and IL-13. So now I'm showing the uh, mice model targeting uh, epidermal uh, barrier. And this is very famous mice model, so flaky tail mice. And this mice phenotype really closely uh, resembled ichthyosis vulgaris and atopic dermatitis. And, uh, but they have uh, identified two different mutations in the filaggrin gene and TMAM79 genes. And they develop uh, AD-like dermatitis uh, under SPF condition like this. And uh, together with uh, elevation of total serum IgE here. And they also are TSLP expression and number of basophils are higher in flaky tail mice, which are dependent on part two pathway. So these phenotypes are a result of double mutation of filaglin and TMAM79. 
So uh, Professor Amasa Amaga's group backcrossed uh, flaky tail mice and generate uh, fragile knockout mice and TMA mutation mice respectively. And here I show the uh, phenotype of fragile knockout mice uh, adapted from their paper. And fragile knockout mice, as you can see here and here, has very dry skin and scaly skin but they don't develop sp spontaneous dermatitis under SPF condition. And their skin show increased penetration of foreign materials colored in green, like here. On the contrary, uh, so TMAM79 matted mutated mice exhibit uh, spontaneous atopic dermatitis like dermatitis. Here I show here. And uh, TMEM uh, matted mutated mice uh, shows uh, also shows the elevation of TWL and decrease of the SC hydration under SPF condition. So TMEM matted mutated mutation uh, not filagrin is responsible for the spontaneous dermatitis phenotype uh, based on uh, these two mice strains. So this is a summarized table for characteristic of uh, these three mice strain. As I mentioned, flaky tail mice show a very cross uh, clinical and immunological phenotype of human topic dermatitis. And together with the elevation of IgE and Th2 cytokines. And uh, they also showed uh, uh, microbial community alter alterations. And fairly knockout mice exhibit a very dry skin phenotype but uh, does not uh, develop spontaneous dermatitis. On the other hand, matted mutated mice show spontaneous dermatitis together with uh, the immunological phenotype resembling human atopic dermatitis. Another barrier gene targeted mice uh, is here I show. So Adam 17, Fox, Fox, Fox 9, Cree mice. So a mutation in ADAM17, which encodes a metal, metal protease, result in a complex pathology with inflammatory skin characteristic of AD patient. So uh, the mouse model of ADAM17 exhibit atopic dermatitis-like dermatitis through impaired epidermal growth factor receptor signaling. So Chris Nagao and their colleague used these mice and very nicely show the uh, spontaneous dermatitis in this uh, ADAM17 uh, mutated mice. And they also show the uh, microbial dysbiosis. So uh, staph aureus and corinibacterium bacterium, uh, dysbiosis uh, induced through impaired EGFR signaling. So let me summarize my talk so far. So barrier disruption, TH2, type 2 immune responses, and pruritis are three major factors in the pathogenesis of AD. And murine AD models are categorized into genetically engineered models and models induced by epicondytaneous application of uh, exogenous synthesizers. Freaky tail mice have two different mutations in the filagrin and TMEM79 and are wise, widely used as a mouse mo AD model. ADAM17 mutation mice show AD-like dermatitis and uh, bacterial-associated uh, dysbiosis. So next, uh, I will show some uh, example of uh, genetically engineered mice models, which target type 2 immune responses. Type 2 immune responses uh, play a central role in the pathogenesis of atopic dermatitis. So TH2 cells and uh, type 2 cytokines such as IL-4, 13, and 5 and IL-31 uh, affect various kinds of immune cells and induce uh, various immune responses and atopic dermatitis. Uh, sorry for the busy slide. So this uh, table adapted from our recent review of mouse model of atopic dermatitis. And there are several uh, mouse models targeting TH2 cell related cytokines. And the uh, IL-4 or IL-13 transgenic mice shows uh, AD-like dermatitis 
together with immunological changes. IL-31 transgenic mice shows uh, polytic chronic dermatitis. And here I show one example, uh, IL-33 uh, transgenic mice. So uh, these mice expressed uh, mouse IL-33 gene driven by a keratin-14 promoter. So, and then this, this mice shows uh, atopic dermatitis like uh, skin, so under SPF condition. And uh, this uh, dermatitis uh, induced by activating uh, group two innate lymphoid cells, uh, IOC2s. So next I will show you the mouse model of uh, atopic dermatitis by uh, epicutaneous sensitization. So upon uh, protein antigen exposure, type 2 immune responses occurs in atopic dermatitis skin. So speaking about the distribution of protein antigen, so you can appreciate that protein antigens, uh, FRTC over, over albumin colored in green, uh, just stay on the top of the skin surface uh, above the tight junction. Whereas uh, haptin, so very small molecules, go through the tight junction and penetrate into the dermis. In atopic dermatitis pathogenesis, so epicutaneous sensitization by protein antigen uh, through the skin would be the start point of type 2 immune responses. Theoretically, epicutaneous sensitization means antigen-specific acquired immune response induced by allergen exposure to skin. So here I show uh, one uh, very established model uh, with uh, allergen exposure, so OVA ODT model. So this model is one of uh, the mouse model, so uh, reported by uh, Dr. Geha's group in uh, 1998, and they used uh, OVA of albumin as a protein antigen and they shave the mouse back skin and tape strip. And uh, so this tape stripping uh, mimics skin injury inflicted by scratching in atopic dermatitis patient. And then they uh, repeatedly uh, apply OVA on the mice back skin. And uh, so 50 days after the initial association, so they can find the uh, really AD-like dermatitis together with uh, TH2 type immune responses. So uh, here I show our work uh, using uh, OVA ODT models as an example. So we thought to investigate the importance of Langerhans cells in AD skin. So uh, here I show the uh, clinical picture of uh, mouse back skin. And uh, so this, uh, the picture shows the uh, dermatitis with Langerhans cells and the right one shows dermatitis without Langerhans cells. So as you can appreciate, so Langerhans cell uh, deficient mice, uh, so show the very like impaired uh, dermatitis uh, compared to Langerhans cell uh, non-depleted mice. So consistent with this, so uh, over a specific IgE level was decreased in LC depleted mice. So to make longer story very short, so we demonstrated that Langerhans cells are critical in epicutaneous sensitization with protein antigen, and we reported uh, this in JCI 2012. So next, I will show you uh, another epicutaneous sensitization model, repeated uh, contact hypersensitivity model. So our CHS model, uh, in this model, so haptin, such as DNFB, TNCB, or oxazolone will be used as a haptin. And as you may know, so immune responses uh, in contact hypersensitivity uh, models are TH1 dominant. However, if we uh, apply uh, haptin repeatedly, so this uh, TH1 environment shift to a TH2 environment. So uh, the, in CHS, so we can detect interferon gamma, 
uh, in acute phase, but in chronic phase, so we can detect uh, much uh, more IL-4 and uh, compared to interferon gamma. So that means, so the Th1 environment just shift to the Th2 after repeated application of haptin. So, and this model originally reported by Professor Shohara's group in uh, 1997. So using uh, that model, so I'm again show the example from our work. So we uh, try to evaluate the role of uh, IL-17A in atopic dermatitis by using uh, this RCHS model. And we use uh, wild type mice and IL-17 and knockout mice and see what happens uh, on ear serving so after repeated uh, haptic application. And as you can see here, so IL-17 and knockout mice shows uh, impaired ear serving compared to wild type mice. And the uh, IL-17 knockout mice show also shows uh, the uh, impaired antigen specific Ig production. So that means uh, the IL-17A plays an important role uh, to uh, induce Th2 immune responses in uh, mouse atopic dermatitis models. So I'm gonna show you another uh, application model. So MC903 model. So this is now, uh, so many people are using as atopic dermatitis model and very famous model, I think. And this mod in this model, so the, we apply uh, MC903, so that is vitamin D analog calcipot oil, uh, apply repeatedly. And uh, that application result in skin inflammation. So here, uh, this picture is so adapted from uh, Brian Kim's group uh, work. And uh, so the uh, significant ear thickness after MC903 treatment. And uh, also you can find uh, TSLP production uh, from keratinocyte after uh, MC903 treatment. And uh, in this model, uh, so skin resident IRC2s are very important in uh, to induce uh, immune responses. So it's, uh, so, and then Th2 cells also play some roles, but uh, in this model, uh, we're, so IOC2s are the main uh, player to induce uh, atopic dermatitis, uh, like dermatitis in mice. And uh, lastly, I will show you the first reported mice models uh, of atopic dermatitis and CNGA mice. So in NC and ZA mice, uh, ag like dermatitis only develops when mice are kept under conventional conditions and particularly when the mice are infected with mites. So it's very, uh, so uh, develop ag like dermatitis, very uh, specific condition. And so, but uh, the genetic defect or genetic mutation uh, in these mice uh, still uh, not uh, clearly identified, but uh, people are intensively working on that. And then, so they are now thinking uh, some genetic effect on chromosome nine loci. And uh, also, so we have uh, some interesting findings. Uh, if we uh, knock out uh, STAT6 in NCNGA mice, so Th2 immune response is uh, significantly impaired in STAT6 deficient NCNG mice. So this uh, dermatitis may be uh, related to like STAT6 signaling pathway. And again, I'm gonna show you some uh, our work. Uh, so using NCNG mice from us, and uh, this is the uh, paper, so we are trying to elucidate the mechanism uh, of um, the uh, JAK inhibitor treatment, so effect of JAK inhibitor treatment uh, on NCNG mice. So this uh, JT052 now uh, approved for as uh, delgocitinib uh, for topical ointment of JAK inhibitor in Japan and maybe in Europe and US. 
And uh, as you can see here, JTE052 uh, treatment, significantly uh, treat, we can uh, so uh, impair, so decrease the ameliorate the dermatitis of NCNG mice. And also uh, the TWL also significantly uh, improved. So uh, the let me summarize uh, the second part of my talk. So there are several uh, genetically engineered mice models targeting type two immune response, such as IL-4, 13, and 31, and 33, and TSLP. IL-33 TG mice show spontaneous AD-like dermatitis by activating uh, group two IRCs. So OVA ODT model mice mimic protein antigen sensitization through injured skin inflicted by scratching in AD patient and develop Th2 immune responses derived AD-like dermatitis. Repeated contact hypersensitivity model with topical application of haptins induce shift of immune response from Th1 to Th2. MC903 application results in skin inflammation associated Th2 cell associated cytokine production such as TSLP and skin resistant IRC2s are enriched in MC903 treated skin. And NCNG mice was the first reported mice model of AD and exhibit AD-like dermatitis only when they are kept under conventional condition and are infected with mites. So uh, here are some take home messages from me. Uh, so many mouse AD models are available to understand the pathogenesis of atopic dermatitis. And there are differences in innate and adapted immune systems between mice and human are important to note. It is worth considering the possibility that any given response in a mouse might have a slightly different functional mechanism in human pathogenesis. Currently, uh, there are no perfect animal models that represent the human AD phenotype. But uh, to understand the complicated pathogenesis of AD in human, so we will definitely need more predictive and pathogenically accurate animal models in the future. So this is my last slide. So we're gonna hold the Olympic games in Tokyo very soon, but I would like to introduce upcoming ISID uh, 2023 meeting in Tokyo. So Professor Kenji Kabashima as a president, and we are preparing for this big conference and looking forward to seeing you uh, face to face, May uh, 10 to 13, 2023 in Tokyo. So please join uh, the ISID 2023 and uh, mark your calendar. And thanks so much for your kind attention. Thank you very much, Seiko, for this excellent talk. I think we all know more about the mouse models of atopic dermatitis now. Um, and, there are, and I would like to encourage also the participants to send questions in the chat. So there is uh, already one question here. If repeated contact hypersensitivity causes atopic dermatitis, should we be patch testing all the atopic patients? No. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> so this model is still like very, I think, uh, not perfect model, I agree. But uh, so we can just uh, induce the TH2 immune environment after repeat hapten application. So of course, maybe hapten like small uh, molecules also play some roles in the pathogenesis of AD, but it's not 100% uh, by uh, haptins. So maybe, of course, protein antigen also plays some load. So, um, so I don't agree. So the uh, older patients should not uh, perform patch testing. Yeah, definitely. Thank you. Actually, I have a question about the, the severity of fetopic dermatitis in these models. So, so what do you think? What is the best way to evaluate the severity? Is it like yeah, some a macroscopic evaluation? Is it the thickness of, of the, the epidermis? Is it the, the infiltration of the immune cells? Is it the transepidermal water loss and so on? So what, what do you think? 
Ah, uh, yeah, it is very good question. Thank you. I think uh, so. We should go for like multi-factor such as like uh, histological analysis, of course, and immune cells infiltration, and also the thickening of the skin. So that maybe uh, resemble the uh, like very thickening of the skin of a AD patient. And also, of course, we need to perform qPCR or the, any kind of uh, these analysis, and we also uh, can perform the TWL or SC hydration to uh, evaluate the barrier disruption. So I think it's not so simple, but uh, we can just uh, accumulate the evidence so that uh, mice or like uh, cause the AD-like dermatitis, and we can evaluate the severity by measuring multiple factors. I think. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, we have an, another question so, um, uh, about uh, other model um, in other species. So um, do you have any idea if there is, uh, is there other validated AD models uh, using other animal species uh, such as pigs? <laughs> Thank you for your, uh, the question. So. I'm not the specialist of pig or other uh, models, animal models, but I think there is some uh, canine, canine models or something like that, dog or cat models of atopic dermatitis already established, and also some rat models, but I, I've never seen that models like uh, using pigs, but I, I need to search for that. So I don't know, <laughs> sorry. This is a very interesting question, actually. Maybe I, I could ask a related question that do, do, do mice develop an atopic dermatitis or a similar phenotype naturally? Like I know that dogs can get atopic dermatitis, but, but can mice get it naturally? Uh, so I think flaky tail mice, so is like spontaneously develop uh, AD-like dermatitis together with, uh, I think, stuff always uh, enrichment on the skin surface, but uh, but sometimes, so it's really difficult to explain, but some of them so do not uh, cause dermatitis, not uh, quite very much, like sometimes very uh, weak dermatitis. Mm -hmm. So, and then, so uh, in that case, we if we apply house dust mite on their skin, so we can induce robust uh, dermatitis uh, in flaky tail mice. But I think uh, some uh, mouse models can develop uh, spontaneous dermatitis, but some are not. So as I explained in the, my talk, so NC and GA mice uh, definitely need conventional condition and mite infection. So it's uh, not so, uh, maybe uh, some of them can induce uh, spontaneously, like IL-4 TG mice or IL-13 TG mice can develop dermatitis spontaneously, but some of them are not, so. Yeah, like in humans, genes and environment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's really like human, yeah. The last question we received, so uh, just a general question about the role of staph aureus in this different model, is there is uh, a model uh, where is more involved. Yeah, thank you so much for the wonderful question. And uh, I've never tried uh, to check the difference between uh, each mouse models of staph aureus, like uh, bacteria burden or the role of staph aureus, but that will be really uh, like interesting topic. So I, I wanna do that in the future, maybe. <laughs> Thank you uh, very much again uh, this time and it was a great pleasure and uh, it was very clear about all this model using used uh, in atopic uh, dermatitis. Thank you very much Seiko for this very clear and nice overview of atopic dermatitis and we let now Eli uh, to close this session and announce the next one. Yes, thank you oh. very much. So I'd like to thank you all very, very much, uh, Seiko, Julien, and Nico, for it was really a, a fascinating, but also I think very practical lecture. And I'd like to uh, invite you all for the next uh, ESDR Kitchen episode, which is due July 28th. It will be presented by uh, Veronica Kinsler. We'll deal with uh, mosaicism in the skin, 
uh, will be very, very interesting. So please do not miss it. And uh, with this, I'd like to uh, thank you all very much for having been with us. Uh, do not forget uh, our forthcoming 15th annual ESDR meeting, which will be virtual. Uh, and uh, I wish you all uh, the very best. Goodbye. Just the uh, ESDR 2021 early fees the deadline has been extended to July 31. Important. <laughs> Bye-bye. Thank Bye -bye. you. Bye-bye.